Okay, I'll call this regular meeting to order for December the 17th, 2019. <clears throat> Result of the agenda for the December 17th, 2019 regular meeting of council be approved. Moved by Councilor Friesen, second by Councilor White. All in favor? It's carried. Result of the minutes of the Municipal Developers Meeting and the regular Council Meeting both held on December the 3rd, 2019, as well as the December 19th, 2019 Special meeting, special Committee of the whole Council Meeting be received and approved. Mm -hmm. Moved by Councilor Friesen, second by Councilor Delorier. Councilor Friesen, do you have a question? What was the date? Uh, December the 3rd, as well as December the 19th. Oh, oh we, no, have a, we have a typo here. We don't oh, know sorry. Uh, right, thank you. We, we haven't reached December the 19th. Yet. Uh, I'm thinking uh, this December the 10th. Please tell well, me. The it's whole right. December the 10th. Yeah. Right. So correction, December the 10th, 2019. If you if you recycle it, that's correct. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Thank you, Council Friesen. You're welcome. Resolved that this regular council meeting be closed and further that a public hearing for bylaw 14 2019 be called to order at 7 31 p.m. Moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. All in favor? It's carried. The purpose of the hearing is to consider representation both for and against special services. Proposed bylaw number 14, 2019, and a bylaw to set tax rates for the collection and management of waste and recycling from residential properties. The requirements of Part 8, Division 4, Local Improvements and Special Services of the Municipal Act have been adhered to. A request that any person making representation to the hearing state their name and civic address. Have anybody? Yeah. You can come forward. Yeah. Welcome. Okay. Calling Clark I have a couple questions, and I'm just I'm sure this might not this is the best place to come. Okay, so I was just wondering how how long does a bylaw stay in place for like garbage recycling? This is a one year. One year. Yes. Okay, so is this something different from the one from um, February of 2019? Because there was a bylaw, like there was bylaw 2 2019 last year that was to replace 2020 17. So now is this bylaw replacing? Two of 2019? Yeah, so the one that was passed in February was for the 2019 tax year. This one that we're passing right now will be for the 2020 tax year, so a little bit ahead of ahead of where we were at last year. Oh, okay. Okay, so and it's so last year it went up three dollars and somewhat cents. This year it's going up six eighty three, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um that comes I, I guess just a further clarification on that. Um last year we, I think it was about 90% of the, or 88, somewhere in there, 88% of the cost of garbage and recycling was captured by this bylaw. The increase isn't necessarily, the $6 increase that you reference isn't necessarily uh, a cost increase. It's now, uh, this bylaw is going to capture 95% of the cost of it. So uh, Last year you had twelve percent of it still borne by your by general taxation. This year you only have five percent borne by general taxation. To pay, to pay for garbage and recycling. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess it is what it is. I mean, things have to get paid. Um, the only thing I would like to point out is that since recycling uh, has taken been taken over by OSS. I know there's been twice that our recycling has not been picked up. Um, that was, I don't have the date of the first time. It was within a week or a couple weeks of them starting. 
and the last time was the week of November 11th. I think our day was November 14th, actually, and it was not picked up. Okay. So, oh, go ahead. I mean, it's, I know this just doesn't encompass recycling, right. but I'm saying if somebody is hired to do a job, and as a taxpayer, right. it'd be nice to see that that job is done when it's, when our day is supposed to be picked up, whether it's whatever. And, and there, yeah, they have, they have, we've had several days since we've started where, where days, like entire areas don't get picked up, but it's due to mechanical mm -hmm. issues, driver problems, all the stuff that a regular contractor would deal with, but uh, the instructions when they don't pick it up is to leave your card out and they, they guarantee they will be back the next day, possibly two days, but uh, they, if you, that's what we've been trying to tell everyone who calls mm -hmm. in is if you were missed, keep your card out and we will be back. Yeah, we did. We left it out to the end of well, yes, our space Thursday, so we left it out Friday, mm -hmm. took it in. But I know the people on, was that 10th? They left theirs out for the entire two weeks. Yeah. And it yeah. was picked up the, like two weeks later. If they call us, we would, we would make sure. So, you know, but I said increase, uh, you know, obviously has to happen, but I mean, and I don't know, like, I don't know if there was anybody within town. I'm just comparing to the Lions. And I mean, I know you can't always compare because it's not apples to apples, but at the same time, I mean, the only time the Lions has picked up was when it was extreme cold or they did have a slight breakdown. But I mean, this has been a short time frame that they started collecting and it's already been, like I said, I know us for sure it's been twice and I don't know any of the other areas when it's been for them. There has been a bit of a trans transitional time and, and if anybody wants, you can make, you know, complaint or do OSS or go to the office here as well. But for this purpose right now, we can kind of stick to the, to the bylaw here okay. for the hearing, so. Okay, <clears throat> I guess my point is though, if, if we're paying increase, I just wanted to you know the intention is to go so that 100% is covered by the this in due course. That's that's the plan, is it not? Uh, no. If oh, okay. like we we estimate those costs, and if we do, we we could put it at 100%. But if we go over, we're required by the province to pay it back, to, to pay it back into the lien. So that would, that would that would cost us more than what we okay. likely go over the lien. That's the reason why we go ninety-five percent. Okay. Okay. Anything else? No, that was all that I wanted to ask. Thank you. All right. Any other further comment from counselors at all? Okay. Councilor Morgan. Uh, Mr. Poole, just for clarification on the OSS. Um, each pickup is tracked, correct? Like each lift. So if there are, and we're charged per lift. So if it is missed, like as is Mrs. Clark's example, that should not be reflective in their invoice, correct? That's, that's correct. Yeah. Well, no, on the residential, we get paid on a, on a, a, a per bin rate. So how many bins are out? Mm -hmm. That's what we're getting charged for on residential, whether they get picked up or not. But they do have GPS tracking systems on the truck that tell them where they were. I was pretty sure that they didn't yeah. charge yeah. each one because I was going around and we'd heard that before and I went around telling town and town and then I had to go and figure out everybody I told to tell them no I lied to you. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, all good then. So, sorry, I, I just like so what does that they get paid? For as commercial as ones as they get paid for every time they lift the, oh, okay. the thing but for residential it's a flat rate whether they do it or not. Right. Well. If they don't do it, we won't pay them. But. Okay. So I have another question. And sorry, it's not quite to do with this. It's still to do with OSS. So with regard to the speed of your drivers, is that something that I should bring up to the town? Yes. Or yeah, definitely. If you, if you have an issue, mm -hmm. please report it as soon as you can so we can we can be prompt on who's driving and what happened. Okay. So I Either one would be fine. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so 
On hearing all person, persons present, I now adjourn uh, the hearing. <coughs>
Uh, just a question about removing Dutch elm tree list sent from provincial surveyors. What does that mean? The, the province used to survey and cut down the, the trees. Uh -huh. Now they've they've given the municipality the responsibility of cutting down the trees. So they provide the survey of the town. They give us a list of all the affected trees, and we are to budget to cut them down. And have they done that? We are in the process. And will you cut them down in the winter time? Just not after April first, and I can't remember the end date off. So you do have a list of the trees in town that have to come? Yep. Councillor White then. Do they subsidize you at all and doing that is at all of the town? No, they give us, oh, off the, uh, I think it's $180 a tree. It's nowhere near the amount that it actually costs. But that was a decision that council made a few years ago to decide whether or not we thought that this was an important program to proceed with. Yeah. Yet. Deputy Mayor went to <clears throat> I guess I had a quick question in that. What is our count for elm trees in our community? Are we a lot, a few? There's, there's, there would still be several hundred in town. This year, the affected trees are over eight. Oh, okay. Um, the other point I have is under utility, you were talking out here about uh, brush cutting lagoon dishes as per um, environmental office request, just talking about ditches and things. I just want you to continue to not forget about the ditches on uh, 10 and 83, I guess, coming into the community where we can have our staff trim around. We do such a great job mowing, but it would just be great if we could trim the around the culverts and things like that coming in. And we did have that discussion yeah. before, but we were working on a plan for what that looked like. So I just don't want you to forget about that as I know this brush being put on there as well. Councilor Gray. It's almost cut out without me asking a question because of that. But how are we doing on the pool? Well, uh, I wasn't going to ask about it. I was going to ask about what, how we're doing on different things because that's a, I've got a lot of questions. We, we've had a lot of people ask about that. Or I've had a lot of people ask. Mr. <coughs> In my report, I said that uh, we're moving on the our piece first of the new year uh, it's, it's one of the priorities we're trying to work on it's uh, uh, it's been a bit of a struggle getting by uh, as we're working through getting an assistant CIO and it's things like that that uh, you know I can be a great help in bringing these things together in perfect time and uh, uh, really I think between all of us we'll, we'll get it going it's just uh, we do have to uh, get that assistance CIO yeah, in place to be able to move on. Councilor Gray. Okay. Well, as long as we're getting, moving forward, because the, the plan was to get, was actually after the school use, which was the end of May, that we would, during that summer period, which is the slowest period we have anyway, to have that time if we need to shut down at all. Although I have to tell you, I had a number of people when I said that. <laughs> we're less than happy that I suggested that. That you suggested that? Well, that, that we would maybe shut down in the summer period when, when it's the slowest because they reminded me that we have a swim, swim club or there are other people who rang me that, that, you know, there's uses at that point. So I just note that. But, so there will be no happy time for us to know. No, <clears throat> okay, for the discussion. All in favor? It's carried. 7.2. Resolved that the November and December 2019 report from the CAO be accepted as information. Moved by Councilor White, second by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Any discussion? Questions? Mr. Crow, any feedback on that at all? Uh, not really, because I can't remember what I've been. I'm, I'm due for a vacation. <laughs> it's coming. I apologize. It's okay. Okay. Uh, you have a question? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Um, I'm just looking at the uh, um, the 10 important issues that council may want wish to look at. Um, i like to see those, and thank you for those. I just hope that we 
don't look at this report, push it to the side and, and not look at the items that are on that list. So I encourage you to continue bringing those forward so that we do work on them. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all in favor? It's carried. <coughs> Resolution on the protective services by the um, just just mentioned. Apologize. <coughs> Resolve that we uh, council received the member protective services report as received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion. All in favor? Oh, sorry, Councillor Greg. Just remind me because I, I just can't remember. Uh, do we, at the end of the year, add up the hours that we spend in different places and then they pay us a share of the off total operational costs? Is that, because I thought we were billing the municipalities some hourly rate. I can check into that. Uh, but no, but they, they, they pay us based on their uh, share, their share of, of, of all of the operational costs and capital costs. Yes, that, based on the number their share of the total number of calls. The number of calls or hours? I'd like to say hours, but I think it's calls. I, I think you're right. I'd like to say hours. But, this, but we can look that agreement that. expires in 10 days, so well, and we'll have an opportunity to revamp that. And the reason I mention it, because, because <laughs> I thought for some reason that they were doing that. And then I, I thought it was hours. And then I saw some invoice things, but it could be because of other things. But I looked at Swan Valley West particularly, who has vastly more hours than us. And I can only imagine, like our budget is whatever it is, and I can, and we've got a bunch of capital items, and I can only imagine the issues we're going to have in terms of recovering them. I believe it, it's just calls, street calls. A 10 hour call is equivalent to a 50 hour call. See that? Okay. <clears throat> for the discussion. All in favor? It's carried. We'll have these compiled, these reports for when we can go to shared services agreements and all that, and we'll have this data with us. This, These reports, so we'll have this compiled so that we'll have this data with us when we're going to those shared yes. services. <clears throat> okay, 7.4, House right. Reports. House of Radio Jenner. No, I was just, uh, in terms of that, are we going to set up a, a, a um, can we have one of our council board meetings, and I am, unfortunately it's going to be very problematic because I'm gone after the 7th, I'm gone until the second week of February, so I'm going to have to do a better asking for permission to excuse, but, uh, but I will have access to internet where I am, and I, if we have some, if not just that, that phone, I'd be more than willing to participate. But I really think we should start planning for that and ask to have a big, you know, all council meeting, whether it's through um, G5 or, or however, but to have that discussion and to be planned for it and to have a strategy. And I, you know, we're gonna do with everybody that's great. We're gonna, I'd like to be part of that because I, I'm fundamentally concerned with, with, with the expectations. I think the plan of that discussion was going to be on the 14th, was that not? Yes. Yeah. So, but we'll make every attempt to have you included in that. I'll be in there for a but I'll, I'll have a, a internet access. I'm, okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. Councillor Greg, or Dore, um, this is regarding this. Regarding the uh, Councillor Greg's question, I'm okay. just looking at the lots agreement. Um, <laughs> We uh, we did it by total portion assessment. Looks like we got that in last time. Okay. So yeah. so we we took the total assessment covered by the Swan River Fire Department, and they pay based on their assessment. Oh, okay. 
their, their share of that pool. Okay, reports, <coughs> Council of the uh, Last week, Monday had a planning district meeting. Um, the only thing of note that come out of that, it was suggested by one of our members of the planning district, one of our, uh, from another municipality, who also sits on the conservation district, um, in conjunction with a letter we got from uh, from uh, the province that we should look at implementing a uh, 90 foot buffer zone on the Swan and Moody River for any development. So, 90 foot, 90 foot, 90 foot or 90, 90 meter? 90 meter, sorry, 90, 90 meter, meter, 90 meter buffer zone. So, that's something that the planning district will be looking at. So, just Put that out there, and I guess we'll, we'll be looking for input from Town of Swan River because it'll affect Swan River as it runs through the Town of Swan River. So, um, be looking for input from the town on that. So, just uh, let everybody know if you have any thoughts on that. We're looking forward to the Grayson Planning District. Um, Wednesday, we had our strategic planning meeting. Um, and I will have my homework done for Mr. Crow for our next one in uh, January. It went well. Uh, Thursday, we had a district rec meeting. Um, we had the initial discussions regarding uh, uh, what what district rec might look like. Um, Patty is putting together an interim district rec budget which is basically what the 2019 one was except there's no in and out that we used to do as far as the uh, 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 what do you call provincial that grant. yeah the provincial grant in and out for the provincial grant for the uh, to the use fees um, facilities fees so what the expectation is, is that we're passing on an equivalent amount that we're getting in our basket funding for 2020 um, to, to buy us time. And our, our amount is about $8,000 uh, to buy us time to, to get this sorted out. Because we're going to need, we're not going to have whatever this is going to look like figured out in time to let the, the, the municipalities know for budget time. So that, that's the plan going forward there. So it, it'll be a it'll be a eight thousand dollar hit for previous years. And then uh, yeah, that was it for me. That's right. <clears throat> In no particular order, the town supper I felt was a, a wonderful way for the only community to get together and we all work together and thank Caddy. Thank you for making much of that happen. Uh, today, uh, Councilor Morial and myself attended a UCN slash Swan Valley School Division meeting, and I've circulated a report. And I guess the bottom line is that UCN wants to identify the needs of the Swan River Valley and the program the courses of study to match the needs. So uh, that was quite interesting. Uh, I can tell you that also I let Council know that they, they asked myself to uh, touch base with uh, Prairie Mountain Health and ask for to arrange a meeting with Prairie Mountain Health, the town of Swan River, UCN, and the Swan Valley School Division to say what can we do collaboratively as a large group to improve health care in the valley where the four of us can work together. And as a, it was evolving as we chatted, so I see no reason why we wouldn't invite the other G4 members also, but I'll get that confirmed with the, the UCN people. Uh, one of their goals is to make the Swan Valley the health care center of the parkland, which is kind of an interesting concept. I don't know where that will go. Thanks, aside, we had a casual meeting today. We'll talk about that in camera. Uh, the AMM, I, I think, most wonderful making all our connections with our peers. I'm cautiously optimistic that the mayor and or Mr. Kroll are going to be able to uh, arrange meetings with the Minister of Health, Minister of Justice, and the Minister of Resources because it's important because we had brief abbreviated meetings with resources, that's for sure. But uh, I think it's important that we as a council go to their site and uh, get a meeting. I talked to the RMLA today, and he said he's trying really hard to make it help, him, help happen. He says a letter from the mayor sometimes has more strength 
that a, one, of the, one of their peers is saying, come on, we need a meeting. So if they know our town is wanting that to happen, I believe you sent letters out already, Mr. Kroll, or I'm not sure. Yes. You did? Yes. All three. Okay. Any response from any of those guys? The mayor has. Okay, you can share that after. Uh, Prairie Mountain Health, uh, one of the things they were discussing is the possibility of bridging. I think the correct word, please uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, David, uh, Councillor Morio, the LPN and the RN program. As a consequence of that discussion and having that training occur in Swan River, I, I called the president, I think he's the president, Doug Lovstad of UCN. And uh, Doug and I talked at length. He likes the idea of 200 nurses being trained in, in this area, not 10, which he used to think big. And uh, right now, I'm going to say there were millions of dollars was going into agency nurses right now. And there are people out of the area. He says, the money, if, if they put money in and train them locally, they'd stay local, they'd live local, hypothetically. And those monies would more than save the money going out in agency nurses. So Doug and I, that would be one of the things we would talk about. So once I know more about the potential meeting with the council and whomever, and you find a date, I'll let, I'll let you know. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Councilor Gray. I've been out of town for the whole two week period. I had a meeting with the Minister of Indigenous and Northern Relations. Um, she remembered your meeting well, remembers Swan River well, so we visited about that. But outside of that, I haven't been. Okay. Councilor Fraser, I will just uh, do your settlement services. I didn't go to that supper, but they had over 70 people. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. At the United Church. What a great turnout. Anyway, that was a big deal. Okay. Um, the strategic planning meeting I attended, and uh, I like all of uh, CAO Mr. Crow's uh, examples because I would just use them and pretend I brought them up. Um, the town supper was excellent. Uh, hats off to Lana and Patty. The hall was beautiful. And uh, supper was delicious, to say the least. Um, on a different note, I'm wondering if there's any way we can express our sympathy as a council to that RCMP member that was killed to his family or to our detachment here. I don't know, a card or something just that we were thinking about what they must be going through right now. That's it. Um, December 10th, I attended the strategic planning meeting we had here in Chambers. Um, again, more progress, good uh, things moving forward. Um, had some homework. Um, get that to Mr. Kroll. Um, to continue moving that uh, important project forward. <clears throat> On December 14th, we had the, the town uh, Christmas party, which was uh, fairly well attended. So some great entertainment and networking that was there by all so good and just want to pass on since this is the last council meeting uh merry christmas and happy new year to all uh, the town staff employees and our residents and ratepayers and everybody else today's meeting you can tell that also and then the meeting at ucn today with uh, councillor white that's who agreed the right okay thank you and then i might be a little long-winded today, so I apologize. I had a little, little extra time on my hands to, to plan my... Well, Councillor White, he shortened up his today, so you have some time. So if, if I am going too long, just uh, uh, let me don't let me know. Um, planning district meeting, I Councillor Delorier uh, spoke everything, everything about that. Um, strategic planning meeting as well. Um, we have some homework to do on that, which I've been putting some thought into, but I don't have uh, that ready for you, Mr. Kroll, yet. Um, district rec meeting was very lengthy. Um, there was a lot of discussion in regards to Councillor Delorier, um, but I think that we're moving in the right direction with the uh, planning of that budget and what that looks like moving forward. Yes, it will cost us a little bit of money, but I think that recreation is uh, very important to um, our citizens, our youth, the, the population as a whole. So I, I trust that we'll have some discussion about that when it, when it
it is presented to council. Um, the stat town of Swan River Christmas party was uh, well received. It was great to see the amount that um, did attend that. Just want to uh, reiterate, reiterate, thank you, um, that that party, that event was for um, all of the staff and all of the committees and everybody that works so hard in our community to, to have what we have. So kudos to all of you and, and, um, and to council and, and the office team as well. Um, handy van operation, I know that we're having some issues with that, but I trust that administration is continuing to work those out and Mr. Poole says there will be some further discussion in camera uh, in regards to that. Um, that's what I have for that. I want to talk a little bit, of, my next two points are going to be the ones that are a little bit lengthy. Um, economic development within our community, um, I like to see that uh, on Mr. Kroll's report that he has that as one of his points that we need to do a better job um, or to work towards it, maybe not a better job, but a job all in itself. However, um, Community Futures Parkland um, is now, has released a statement that they are offering business or services one day a week here in Swan River. Um, so those startup businesses or businesses that are wanting to get going, they are providing that information and training one day a week here in Swan River on their satellite office, which is great for our community. It's maybe not what everybody was expecting or wanting, but um, it's a start and hopefully we can make that grow it and flourish to be more than just one day a month. But at this point, we'll take what we can get. Um, and as, as uh, in discussion with economic development, we, um, we have a, an economic development officer, not officially called an EDO, but I would like to think that our job as counselors is um, is to feed that information of economic development to that to that office and have that continue to grow, um, and which is something I think we will maybe discuss further in camera. It's a, I've got a few notes on that, uh, but that was one thing I wanted to address and talk about. I want to talk about us continuing the conversation and what that looks, what development looks like for Valley View Drive. I'm hoping that that is brought to the next town meeting that we can debate that once more, have a further discussion, and hopefully come up with something of production with that. My next point um, involves a lot with policing in Swan River. Um, there's been a lot of discussion, as everybody knows, about crime rates, and there's emails going around from all of us about rates of crimes from the RCMP as well. Um, and and there's it's no surprise you see it on social media and the in the media all over the place with crime rates and, and um, what that's doing to our community. Groups that are forming and becoming, trying to. Uh, create their own thing. Everybody continuing to ask what's council doing to to combat crime. It's not our job as counselors to be out on the street policing it and and, and watching those, um, trying to watch for those who are committing crimes. But I do have a couple points that I do want to talk about. Um, there there is a, a a presentation or a seminar that is coming up. Um, to which some of our counselors are invited to, um, from what I understand, and it's about um, uh, about a gentleman of um, who wrote a book about no miss uh, no more Mister Nice Guy in your community. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about that and, and the fees that go on about that seminar. That seminar is thirty five dollars. I just want you to think about that thirty five dollars at the moment. Um, if we have a, a community that is struggling for policing services and, and feels that crime is is at an all-time high and, and nobody knows what to do with that crime, perhaps we can look at um, what that $35 means. We have a group that is bringing, willing to bring in a, somebody to speak about, um, about 
I'm not going to go into detail about what his speaking points are, but I don't necessarily agree with them, and I don't think that that's the answer for our community. When you have vulnerable citizens who are in a, in a position of, of wanting to see drastic action, I think that that's going to open a lot of uh, interpretation of to what he's going to say. I haven't read the book, um, so I will not speak on that. But I just want to go back to the $35. If we, if this group is planning to get as many volunteer or people to come to this group at $35 and the community is willing to spend that $35 for a 40 minute hour presentation in a book, um, that lasts one day, that $35 that you're putting for that one day, if you look at that in terms of a year and every citizen puts in $35, that gives us an extra, um, police officer for our community. <clears throat> and I will go into a little bit of detail with that. So approximately our policing costs are about a million dollars for the town of Swan River. That ended, that's seven officers that are, are uh, put for the town of Swan River, which is 143,000. These are rounded numbers um, as well, $143,000 per those seven officers uh, divided by 44,000 residents equates to about $35. So I just want you to think about that $35 that you're willing to spend and willing to go to a seminar to learn about topics that some of us may not believe are the best topics for the community. If you're willing to pay for that, why not spend that on um, an extra police officer for our community? Further to that, I want to talk about my million dollar estimate. Our contract invoices for 2019 were about $1.1 million, um, which includes a seven uh, full-time equivalent position. That contract also includes the building equipment, fleet and training costs. We also pay for two clerks at that detachment. We, see the, we receive a, as the town a policing grant, which our annual policing cost is only, not only, it's signif a significant amount, but it works out to about $750,000. So just for that $35, I think that if we can encourage, or if we can see that our community is wanting to spend that for one day, I think that we should seriously look at another officer for our policing budget. So having said all of that and that being long-winded, I would like to move that we plan for one more officer in our budget proceedings for us to debate. It's worth worth the debate, so I'd like to see that we add more money into that budget for one more officer for the 2020 budget year. <clears throat> the other thing I want to talk about is is in, in terms of crime is what, what our police <coughs> uh, service comes to tell us and things that we need to have a serious look at. And that was the, uh, the information of camera systems. And then there was the big porch light um, opportunity or, or push that is coming. I would like to have a resolution or talk about what that looks like in terms of giving our administration the power to, um, or the go ahead, I guess, to research that what that looks like and what we, a recommendation for an incentive program. I'm not saying that it's something we would do, but at least if we could, as council, put that forward and debate the numbers when they do come in. And that is in terms of having a, a camera system that um, meets the requirements of the RCMP, um, that, you're, that you have that system that they require, that you're trained in it, when you have that, you're presented with a certificate, you bring it into the town office for some sort of incentive. And I don't know what that incentive is, but I would like to see a recommendation by um, administration um, for us to look at. As well, it, the other point that they did talk about was uh, having lights on, and which brings you to the porch light movement um, and having your premises lit up I'd like us to continue or to look at that in the same terms of, of an incentive program, what costs are. Um, perhaps the town should be 
could be the one selling those um, porch lights for those of you who don't know it's just a regular light bulb that you screw in and it goes from dusk till dawn um, you just leave your switch on and it goes on and off on its own I hope that everybody's not saying a word or so that what's your moment <clears throat> so anyway I'd like that I would like to pass a resolution today to have all of council give the permission to administration to look at that and I don't know if that needs to be a resolution or how that works but uh, hopefully Mr. Kroll can steer me in the right direction. Could I bring those two resolutions have it, have it on the next agenda? For the council? A absolutely. Well, well, just backing it up here, we're talking about RCMP, additional RCMP, Budget. we're talking about budgetary items, those things should probably be discussed in, in a town meeting prior to uh, anything else before that, just so that we don't get too far ahead of ourselves, that's my opinion, but I think that's probably what we should do first, to see what the, the costs are and what kind of direction that we should be probably giving administration before they're going ahead and, and doing something like that. So we should know exactly what our costs are, what our, what our thoughts are, what, what that looks like first. I think they're great ideas, but I think that we just need to absorb some of that and, and sit down and talk about it a little bit. So <clears throat> that's only me speaking, but... Uh, I, I guess yeah. just to clarify that, I. I don't expect that we add the so there's three parts to it the first part is the extra officer i don't think that that definitely needs to be discussed but i would like that to be a discussion at budgetary time i don't know if that necessarily needs to be at a cow meeting it can be discussed and debated i think at budget time um, and shown at that the other one um, in regards to the camera system and the porch light i don't expect us to make a decision today all I'm expecting is us to give the go ahead to administration to prepare what the cost would be. I don't, I'm not saying that we need to do it. I just want administration to have the okay to, it's not fair to, and I, I would never expect administration to prepare something just because I was the one that asked for it. If the rest of council doesn't feel that that is something that we should have administration do it, I'd like to know now and then I can not have that discussion and administration would be able to say no no johnny or when i come knocking at the door is what's those numbers no no council decided that wasn't it so that's why i want would like those two resolutions or one resolution go ahead i don't really think you need a resolution for that it's just uh more of council's instruction to me if council's satisfied that uh, i can spend some time to put those numbers up for sure so before I finish up, what is? I, I, I think Johnny's right to ask for res, council speaks by resolution. So I guess Johnny, because you know the, these are things that sure they're pretty reasonable things for administration to look into. But council glory may come at months time and want you to look up something crazy, and it'd be good to have an actual thing that administration goes. No, oh, this is. I, I, I think passing resolution is fine for to give. Clear direction to administration. Otherwise, there's not clear direction. I I, I don't know. Well, I just I'm just thinking in terms of uh, in the in the higher level of, of how council is supposed to instruct administration. Uh, really, the day to day looking up of things. I, I'm doing that constantly for everybody in the background. Constantly, I get emails saying, "What do you think of this?" And stuff, and that's all. Part of my job is to inform you guys and if that's a if that's a request i mean it's not a it's not an overarching request to say oh now i have to push everything out of the way for days it's it's really just spending a few hours to look things up to try to get straight answers for council um, I, I think it depends I, I think it depends if it's a direction that we're going to go in then it needs a resolution if it's if it's a request for information i, I think we waste your time doing that. But I thought we covered this a couple of, maybe it was last meeting or maybe it was meeting before, I can't remember. And we said we were going to have an in-depth discussion at some meeting where we were going to talk particularly about crime and what the alternatives were. Because uh, it may be that an individual police officer is a useful expenditure. I, I don't know. Uh, I have my doubts that one in one police officer, which and, and again, remember how that plays out, right? Um, you can't have, I 
if you're just one officer, you've got to have two. And and worse, from our perspective, um, the total amount of time, even assuming you could you, you could count on, on 40 hours, is 22,080 hours. But most officers spend about 200 hours in training. Um, they have time off of another, I don't know exactly what it is, but 160 hours and, and other things. Most times that's like 1,400 hours. Okay, That's nothing to sneeze at. But by the same token, I'm not sure exactly what it, we would need to know what exactly you would want that officer to do. Most statistics, I think, will tell you that the way to deter crime is to ensure detection. Um, officers tend to be responsive. That, that is, they tend to be investigators. Um, and there are better and worse investigators. And so we may be better to find things and, and, and use a different story, but um, in, in Britain, we had a, I went to a murder trial and they tracked people by use, using CCTV, which they spread through all of them. That was one of those parts, but most major metropolitan areas. I'm not sure that we can afford that, but, but we need to look at the way of people knowing they're going to get caught. Because if people know they're going to get caught, they're more, less likely to commit crime. It doesn't even matter what the punishment is most of the time. It's really about knowing they're going to get caught. And, and so I think we need to have an internal discussion about what we think the alternatives are. And I think we need to involve them, the community, in a broader discussion about what the alternatives are and what people are prepared to take. That doesn't mean we shouldn't consider another police officer. It may be part of an overall urging to have another thing. I think it's a mistake to simply think that one police officer will make any big major impact. Uh, we, are, we are preparing for uh, something coming up in the new year, uh, which uh, I believe the mayor will probably touch on a bit uh, with the community meeting assessment. And in the preparation for that, we will be looking at what are the options because uh, if we don't have answers to go to a community meeting, then we look like fools. So that's why. I agree. To look at options. Okay. I'm not sure what the thirty-five dollar. Like I've got it written down, and who cares about the twenty? I think it's ten dollars on the Monday nights just to go to the originals, the, the evening seminar, and then for the next two, help me if because I tried to. I spent the last twenty minutes trying to find it. I can't find it. The Monday night one is thirty. Ten dollars. Whatever. But it's not thirty-five dollars. But that, we're not that getting into debate about. His point was, if you're prepared to spend thirty-five dollars, we can get another police officer. That's your interpretation. Well, I heard. <laughs> I'll, I'll finish up whenever, whenever yeah, I'm ready. I heard. Okay. Let's go back to council. So I, I don't understand why I can't finish my thought. Okay, my statement. I just want to answer yours too. The thirty-five dollars was uh, for the fee to go to the seminar, and then twenty-five dollars was for a book. Yeah, that's from what I understood. So it was thirty-five dollars that it potential person would could or would fork out. Um, I'm not saying that you would do that entire option, but I'm saying the point was about the $35 is if you're willing to spend $35, it could be potentially for an <coughs> police officer. I'm all in favor of the other police officer. I agree with everything you said, but I think the whole town isn't going to spend $35 to go there. We'll be lucky if it, whatever is there is great, but it's not going to be that. And I'm in favor of your idea. I, I I agree. It was just that I understand your point. I was just making the point that if we have people that are willing to spend thirty five dollars for a seminar and a, and a book, that it could be. And going back, and I'm going to finish up, but I want to just elaborate more on Councillor Gray, Gray's point. Um, you're absolutely right. I don't know that it's a police officer that we need. Mm -hmm. The point is, is that we need to look at the recommendations from the police po police themselves. And we did see an email that did come from the, the sergeant saying that we need to lobby for two more positions of what they were. Um, that would be, you know, for two more positions, we could go to the province and say, we'll fund X number of dollars for one, you give us another one, and we work together. The point is, is that it's not specifically for a police officer, it was just the general amount, which I equates agree. to a police officer. But it's not for me to say that a police officer is the answer. It's to work with the police to come up with the issue. Okay. Um, 
so I guess finishing up that we then I have more to go, but I want to know before I move to my next topics, do we need a resolution for that? Yes or no? Do we just give direction to some say resolution? Some Mr. Kroll says no. I, I would just like to know for my own notes. In in general, this this is part of my job is to gather information for council. Uh, it's, it's working up to a meeting um, which we are going to have uh, to do with policing and crime. We've been working on this, as you guys know, uh, for, for a few weeks now, trying to get on top of all this stuff. <clears throat> and we've been working with the RCMP as well, and that's, uh, I think that's what the mayor may touch on in his report, I'm not sure. but. Uh, but we're working toward having having something to do with the RCMP to be able to um, discuss these issues and, and, and look at what the town can do. And as part of that, the administration's job is to investigate what options are available beforehand. So. I'm not sure if that really gave me the answer to my question, but I, I'll take it as... I'm practicing being a politician. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take it that that means that uh, I will be able to see some some sort of political <laughs> preliminary numbers at some point. Um, all right, the other couple things in regards to crime is that I would like to um, look at a couple resolutions, past resolutions, and I want to be able to bring them back to council for debate. Um, and it's going to be resolution 1797 that I think that we need to bring back and look at rescinding. So and you can do that in the notice of motion? Yes. Okay. What is motion 1797? It is a, <clears throat> a curfew bylaw that I think that is going to bring up open a can of worms, but that's kind of my point to do it. Um, and that'll be brought back for rescinding and opening up the can of worms. The other one is to look at bylaw number 13, 2016, um, which just needs, I, I, I just want to look at it. That one is not rescinding, but to look at it and revamp, because it is from 2016, whether or not it, there needs to be changes or not, I want that to come back for council to, I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, it's just the, in regards to the um, graffiti bylaws and graffiti and uns, unsightliness of properties with graffiti and it talks about retailers and things like that um, so I just want that to come back and, and just look at it in terms of discussion do you want to reimpose a curfew is that what you're no, uh, the 1797, the first one of, about the curfew, is I think that we should rescind it because it's not something that can stand up. So why should we have something that is still on the books, right? I'm not saying that we need or need to, but I, I want that to come back as, as debate for council. <clears throat> Are you done yet? No, I'm almost done. Um, my last point is, is that um, I want to talk a little bit. I want to say my Christmas greeting. Christmas is about spending time with family and friends, creating happy memories that will last a lifetime. For my wife, Jenna, and my son, Parker, I want to wish everybody um, in our community, citizens and colleagues, administration staff as well, and everybody in our community and surrounding community a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and I want to finish my little um, time that I've had by saying I would like you to be the reason that somebody else smiles to me that's to all you people <laughs> are, are you done now I am done now yes thank Good you, you thank, thank you for your, your oh been thank, thank you for your report. You've been saving that up for a long time, I think. So, but uh, no, it was really good. Um, I guess for myself, that wasn't actually already covered off. Um, uh, the well, actually, you know what? The, the town's the Christmas skating party that we had uh, a couple weeks ago was really good, as well as the Christmas supper. 
Um, Glenn and Patty definitely have done an outstanding job organizing those two events. Mr. Crow, I think you had something to do with those a little bit, but maybe at the minimum, but those two ladies definitely deserve the uh, kudos for doing all the work that they did. I'd like to also congratulate all the service award recipients that we did receive uh, their awards on Saturday night, as well as to Cal Dahl on his three year bar of exemplary service uh, for fire protection. Uh, Cal has done an outstanding job for the fire department, and uh, his service is, is definitely a gift to us in our community. <clears throat> um, as well as our two uh, retirees this year, uh, we uh, congratulated um, Mr. Colcott at his retirement this year and uh, wished him well as well. <clears throat> um, just a few days ago, just a few other things. I received the books here from uh, Doug Griffith here and that's on the 13 Ways of Criminal Community. These books are available to us. They're, we sent them to the, the town office. So anybody that wants to take one and read one, go ahead, it's at your, your leisure, but uh, just bring it back so we can all kind of share it. Um, received a, I didn't know what to expect in this envelope, but I received an envelope today from the National Defense, and I was wondering, geez, what was in this in this big envelope? And here it turned out it was just a calendar from uh, uh, National Defense on the Canadian Rangers and, and how they're happy that we have this group now established in, in the Swan River Valley and doing an outstanding job as far as protection and, and search and rescue and what their, what their duties and responsibilities are. So glad to see that we have volunteers that want to stand up and do so. <clears throat> the um, I did receive a letter from a group that used to be called the Safe House, and they're no longer called the Safe House. And we were supposed to, we should be noted that they are not the Safe House anymore. They are called the Transitional Twenty Four Seven Supported Residential Facility. So, in our language moving forward, we remember that it's no longer the Safe House. Um, I also want to say congratulations to all those who did the uh, organizing for the museum ex Christmas displays, which were outstanding. Um, I took a, a couple of tours down there, and if you haven't been down there yet, you should go and see it because it's uh, it's very uh, it's outstanding. Um, Minister of Justice and Health, there was some discussion about that as whether well. our letters did go out, and they did go out. And I did hear from our MLA Rick Wolchuk about. Um, Health Minister Cam Fries did receive the letter and then he will be responding to us or that response is on, on its way and it sounds like we, we will get a, a meeting with him uh, at some point in time it's just a matter of when that will be but we will get that and then as far as justice goes um, we don't have, have not heard back from the Justice Minister but I'm sure that is, is coming. Um, kind of going back to the crime thing and we are working, there's, there's, uh, there's a couple groups working together here with us right now, but um, with the RCMP and, and, and working with the community, coming with something together that we can hopefully organize and discuss as far as crime goes. And, and you know, more boots on the ground is, is one of, I don't know, discussion, I guess, but also, like Councilor Gray had mentioned, you know, combating the crime too before it, you know, it gets there. And there's other issues that are part of that. Uh, crime problem that we have in this community and so um, I know that there had been some talk about um, cameras and all that and at the AMM we did actually uh, stop at one booth I can't remember who was with me I think it was Council Memorial and they do have these wireless cameras that they, they set up different places all over the community and they could be on the outskirts of the community they could be inside the community they, they're uh, actually wireless they, they transmit to a PVR. So that organization was interested in maybe making a presentation before us. But there's this is just on top of a lot of things that we need to talk about. And, and we need to get that into a public forum of some kind. And uh, we don't want to have some kind of a uh, uh, disorganized group where it, it gets out of control. We want to make sure that we have people there that are, are professional people as far as the RCMP go and other uh, protective services people that have the confidence that they could be within a group that we can have some actual formal and, and, 
and, and logical discussion about what we need to do as a community moving forward. And this is not only for the town of Swan River. I've actually spoke with some of the other councillors from our neighboring municipalities, and they feel that they want to be a part of this discussion too. So I think that that's all just kind of a part of it, but us having the open discussion about what it means for us and maybe what our input into it is important as well. So it's it's not an easy thing to put together, but I, I think that we'll get there. So anyway, that's uh, that's it for me. And of course, best of the wish uh, all Christmas this year and, and, and Happy New Year's and safe for all those people that are traveling during the Christmas season. I just wanted to make a suggestion since you brought up the, uh, the community meeting on crime. I think we should have a lawyer there for the, for the reason, for the fact that they can maybe advise the crowd or advise, you know, there's going to be suggestions coming out. If there are any like, any like the su suggestions some people can give to me personally, they're absolutely illegal. I think it would be prudent to have a lawyer there that can say, can kind of guide the discussion within what, what we're allowed to do within the confines of, of the law. Because I mean, there's some people that advocate yeah. for roaming vigilante groups right. and that kind of thing. Well, that's not going to happen. But I, so I, I think that's something that we maybe need to look at so that you can kind of frame the, the discussion on, on what, what can and can't do. Okay. You mentioned that you, uh, there's some communication with the Minister of Health and the Minister of Justice, but I didn't hear anything about the Minister of Resources. Uh, we have a letter to the Minister of Resources. Sent out to Justice, okay. Uh, no. Resources? Yep. What's that? Uh, Lane Peterson. Okay. Louisiana Pacific LP. One of the topics we tried to meet with him and it didn't happen. And, and you feel that that discussion with the Minister at that time was not well, the two minute, up, or do you think no, we should no. you want to follow up further Absolutely. on that? Absolutely. I'm sure he didn't feel comfortable either. It was, Two minutes at the end of the hall. I felt that he he didn't think that it fell into his portfolio, or is that just something that is not quite uh, ironed out yet? It's just it is his. Yet. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so well then we'll meet up maybe a little bit later on. We can talk about that. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? We're good. Okay. Where am I here? Seven three one. Go. Mm -hmm. no. Eight oh, two eight right. one. <laughs> right. uh, thank you. 8-1. Resolve the town of Swan River commit membership to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities for the years 2020 and 2021 for a fee of $1,012.90. And and moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Councilor Friesen? No. Um, okay. That's carried. 8.2. Resolved that the Parkdale Avenue group, comprised of those listed in the attached letter put forward by Ron Thiessen by given permission to utilize the Parkette area on Parkdale Avenue for family friendly Halloween activities during Halloween of 2020 to the following conditions. That any tent installation be coordinated and approved by Public Works Superintendent, that at least two thirds of the homeowners on Parkdale Avenue agree to the activities by signing an agreement roll call form. That a safety plan be filled and approved by the Town of Swan River Safety Officer at least two weeks prior to the event. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion, Councillor Gray, and the Councillor DeLaurier. Um, have you spoke with the applicant regarding the conditions outlined, or is there, if you're okay with going around and getting all the signatures, or they, they know that that's going to be what's expected of them? I haven't talked to Ron. And or, I've talked to him a couple times. Okay. I didn't tell him about that, but I did tell him that his neighborhood had to be on board with it before council would would give permission, simply because you don't want to have yeah. one family and then every other family is against it. And it would just be a, not a nice time there. For the discussion, all in favor? Well, I did oh, oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Well, you deferred to Dory. <laughs> okay, I'm yes. sorry. Um, <clears throat> so this is the the second bay, right? Yeah. And and 
how did we decide that it would be too, I mean, it just seems to me it's a big park area. Who cares? If it's, I mean, as long as they have a safety plan, as long as they're not setting up some piece of junk that's going to cause a problem. I don't, I, I'm not sure that we would want necessarily security for me. I mean, I, I don't really think it's as, as big a deal. Um, now, maybe there are other people who will feel strongly about it on, like, if somebody set up on my bay and go, oh, that's nice, and go about my business. I, I, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm just not that, I'm, maybe I'm just incredibly naive. It just seems to me that why would I care? It's a, those are huge areas, and somebody sets up a tent, what do I care? Yeah, they're going to be putting up a tent, and they're going to be putting up, uh, having a fire pit. Um, so we have two things going on there, and they've reported that they had 250 people there this year. Uh, so it's, it's going to be quite an organized thing. And, uh, we're down to the town, uh, basically the town has given them permission to do that, and if they give them permission to do that, and if something happens, the tent collapses or anything like that. No, I, I understand the safety yeah. and the, and the superintendent. Yeah. The, the, it's the two thirds of the people. I mean, if there's 250 people coming to an event, I, I'm, anyway, I, I, I'm going to vote for the resolution because I, I, I don't really care that much. I, I just thought it was a fair number. Usually a super majority is, is a very okay. safe number to go with, and that way you have the majority of your community and, and that's just around the circle. There's only you know, 10 or 15 houses around the circle there, so. Probably 30, but yeah. Okay, yeah, but, but it, it's it's a reasonable number to actually go and try and I, I verify. Just, so. I, for me, I would have just not had that, but I, I'll vote for it because I, I mean, if there's a problem later, we can fix it. Okay, I, I, I scored that two thirds, and, and my reasoning for that is this is a kid's Halloween uh, event, but what if, if we don't set that precedent and then in the future, we have somebody that wants to have a beer gardens or whatever the case is, and then, you know, without the support of everybody on their block or their their area, I think that it would cause havoc. So I like, just wanted to state that I'm in favor of the two thirds. Okay. Further discussion? Council that will be communicated to the people asking. Oh, yes. Okay, so, thank you. Okay. All in favor? Carried. Point three, whereas sections 365 two of the Municipal Act provides that council may in any year designate the immediately preceding year or any earlier year as the year for which property, which properties the taxes in respect of which are in arrears for the year must be offered for sale by auction to recover the tax arrears and costs. Be resolved that the designated year for which properties in arrears be offered by sale by auction be 2019, meaning all properties with outstanding taxes from the year 2018 and prior, and be, re, be it resolved that in accordance to sections 363 one of the municipal act, costs shall be the actual costs incurred for each parcel listed for the 2020 tax sale plus an administration fee of $50 as set forth in the Manitoba Regulation 1597 and be it, be it further resolved that the 2020 tax sale be held Wednesday, September the 9th, 2020 at 2 p.m. in the Town Swanwick Chamber, Council Chambers and the tax service will be hired to manage the tax sale for the town during the fiscal year 2020. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <laughs> Resolved that the Town of Swan River cease providing raffle licenses effective January 1st, 2020. Moved by Councilor Delorier, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion. And there's a, there's a decision paper there, but uh, Councilor Morio and then Councilor Gray. Um, providing if this does pass and we go in that direction, um, is there going to be a you know, community notification to let them know that there could be a change in process of where they need to go get these lottery things, like in the town page or a advertisement? Or Yes, I've, I've already instructed uh, Terry 
Aunt Ken that uh, we'd have to be notified on the website and put out in uh, next month's uh, monthly newspaper ad uh, if, if it goes forward. Uh, from, from the decision paper, it seems like it would be a logical thing to pull this. Councillor Gray? Well, it is a logical thing to go with from the town's perspective, meaning the town entity. But the reality is that um, with 80 or 100 people, we're now going to have to go through Manitoba Lottery Commission because it's it's actually, it carries wrong about one thing, it's not anything to do with Revenue Canada. It's actually to do with the criminal code and the fact that you can't have lotteries without um, a license. And, and so, I don't know if anybody's to go with Manitoba Lottery, but for a $500 lottery to go to Manitoba, we just kill that. And for me, I think that's ill-considered. The $400, so it costs us, I don't know, $1,000 of staff time, is $600 well spent on letting 80 community groups raise some money. I'm going to vote against it, you can vote however you want, but I just think it's ill-considered. Um, you know, quite candidly, I would almost say we should be charged for it, or we should just eat the four hundred dollars too, uh, and just acknowledge there's going to be a cost of us doing that. But and the reason you have to have a license is you can't have every wonky person going around creating raffles or or lotteries where they're going to keep the money for themselves. But do we really want to make the Lions Club have to jump through hoops so they can hold a raffle over at, at the at their beer garden or something? I mean, it just makes no sense to me. For me, I just, like I said, if I was going to make a decision, it wouldn't be this. It would be to remove the $5 fee entirely. But I'm going to go against it. In, in, uh, in looking at this earlier, uh, I went to the provincial website. It can be all done online, like the application and everything. I didn't, it didn't look like it was that. No, it's the regulations and the dealing with lotteries. If you're not right. making big ones, it's, it's not worth it. So this uh, decision paper it shows us what the do we what the uh, revenue that we'll be losing is, but do, do we know how much we spent in administrative time, like uh, administering these seventy or eighty raffles? Uh, the, I think that that's Terry's B point. Like it's not the in versus the out. He's he's definitely telling you that the that we spent way more time than we do than the revenue. Eight, but the point he's trying to make is we're going to lose our charitable status if we continue to do this, or if we continue to do this and get caught. We're, we're, we're giving raffle licenses out. We're about total prizes are more than 3,000, and we've been doing this for a very long time. So these people are expected to get it, and when we say no, well, they get very, very upset. Community members, they're good people, they're volunteers, and when they hear a no, especially after hearing a yes for 20 years, they just they get upset. So we spend a lot of time explaining to these people the rules, how we how the town can't lose its charitable status over this, and according to Canada Revenue Agency, that's that's the part that you're referring to, is it's he's called them directly and they say, yes, if you get caught, you will lose your charitable status. <clears throat> So that's the point Terry's trying to make. Uh, I'd like to see an opinion on that, I, I have to say. That's how I, that's how I, 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 I that's read, how Terry's explained to me. Yeah. But I'd like to see an opinion that says that from a tax perspective. Firstly, I don't think we have a charitable tax number in that sense. We're a municipality and, and as a, an agency of government, we are entitled to receive monies and the tax benefit is similar to a charitable thing, but it's a donation to a municipality. That's the whole point of the Alan Rich thing. So I don't think that we lose a tax number the way, look, uh, the Friendship Center doesn't, but if the Friendship Center had a charitable tax number, they have to actually spend it for these purposes. But municipalities can spend money for whatever purpose they want. And we're entitled to grant licenses that we're not spending the money. We're granting licenses. And, and our, our granting of a license is to avoid criminal prosecution by them. And it's the granting of a license in accordance with the uh, 
impact of that province. So that's why, for instance, there are some provinces that have casinos on reserves, some that don't. It's a it's a it's an act of the government of the of the of the province that sets that. Now we could go with doing if if, if I thought if I believed that dealing with liquor Canada well, uh, liquor gaming and cannabis authority was going to be an easy thing, I I wouldn't object. But my experience has been incredibly the opposite. Councillor White and then Councillor uh, uh, the term maybe it's inappropriate but if we get caught I don't think if we follow what it's saying there if it goes for sport it goes for health it goes for the environment there's not much that it doesn't go for so if it fits any of those descriptors we're not getting caught we're supporting I, I see the opposite side of this says a bad tone to me we're not getting caught we're supporting different entities definitely they are as I'm told. Hmm. so just to be clear, when we're talking about community raffles, we're talking about um, organizations getting a 50-50 license, etc. Right? Raffling off a quilt. Yes, exactly. It takes 10 seconds on the LGA, L the LGA Liquor and Gaming to do a special occasion raffle license that is free for a special occasion raffle. Uh, it needs a signature, and usually within 48 hours, they're back. I've had a lot of experience doing them. I didn't even know the town did them, and I've helped many people apply for them just by printing out the form and faxing it. Not only can you do it online, don't think that is something that we should be meddling in with, with it. So, I, I mean, I, I've pulled it up on my screen easy enough to apply for it. There's ones that are more for 10,000 and less and greater than 10,000. I don't think that we need to be assuming the risk for any of those. Um, on the issue of charitable status, I, I agree this is now the second thing that's been brought forward by administration in the past maybe three years. Of, I don't want to use the word fear mongering, but I have been of the fact that we're going to lose our charitable status. I, I, I would like an opinion from a from an out, uh, well, a tax lawyer or some outside or Revenue Canada like that, maybe or not, maybe not Revenue Canada, maybe an actual tax lawyer, Revenue Canada is going to say, yeah, pay us all the taxes you want. Um, but uh, that defines what our parameters are because this has come up now one too many times in my mind and we're making decisions off of this and we're not sure exactly what... Uh, what the parameters are, so I, I would I would like a, an outside opinion on on what does it mean for a municipality to have charitable status within any aspect of of, of it, or or is it like Councilor Greer says where it's not actual charitable status, like if I'm the health foundation or something. So I I'd like an opinion on that. Um, as far as what's in front of us here right now, I guess if it's as easy as Councilman Tony says, then. Uh, it's probably neither here nor there whether the town does the actual licensing. The neighbor should table? Uh, if that's the wish of council, then you can table it. I'm not saying we need to table it because I, I think it's two separate issues. One is one is if if, if uh, LGCA can give a license over the internet in, in 10 minutes, then yeah, maybe we aren't providing this that great of a service, but as long as the council, like Councilor Grace says, we're not losing, our community groups aren't losing out. Um, <coughs> Councilor Morial and Councilor Gray. Um, looking at uh, Mr. Benita's uh, decision paper, and it also uh, says that the town has to re collect like reporting requirements like financials and all that. Is that currently happening? Like, is that like that established process that's required to happen? happening or is that a deficiency that he's pointing out that's we not definite, we're definitely required to do it how successful we are I would have to refer to Terry um, on how successful he is I know he fights for it it's a struggle <clears throat> okay. I'm actually going to pass the chair to the Mayor Tony I'd like to comment on this too <clears throat> so um on Councillor Gray's comment from the very beginning, and 
we right now have a process in place right now that, that whoever might be and wants a quilting raffle or church raffle or whatever, they can simply walk into the office and get their, their license, pay their fees, and be done with it. Instead of having to come up with a new process or, or go to the to online, sure, some people are more savvy online and stuff like that, but not all groups are. And, and, I, and I, I just think that, like Councillor Gray, I think was kind of going that way where we're offering a service at a very small amount of money to, to people in our community and, and community uh, uh, services. As far as um, the uh, losing the charitable status, I think that right now all council doesn't know if that's the actual uh, fact or not. And, and the thing is, maybe we need more information on that. So for me, I will vote against it. But if council wants to look at to see if, as far as what the um, uh, position is as far as the cabinet revenue and we need to have an outside inform uh, uh, informant or, or uh, tax, whatever the specialist to give us that information, I would be more willing to listen to what that is because we have heard different things over a number of years and I just don't know how it applies to this. Thank you. Any other comments after Mayor Jacobson? Councilor Mario? I make a motion that we table this until we get third party uh, review. I'll that's second. Good. Okay, that's tabled. Sorry. That's tabled. <coughs> At this point, I'll transfer the chair back okay, to the mayor. Thank you. Well, first we have to okay. we have to vote on the motion table. I think, don't we? Mm -hmm. And 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 secondly, so it's not just tabled by virtue of motion. But secondly. Um, if it's just tabled like that, it comes to the next meeting, unless we're tabling to a specific meeting, in which case we say it's tabled to this meeting. I, I think you have to, I, I, I leave it to you what you may intended, but. It automatically comes to the next meeting, or yeah. unless it's Unless it's to, to a specific yeah. date. So I, you, unless you, I don't think we're getting an opinion by January 7th, is my no. point. Yeah. And so if, if the intention is to get an opinion, defer it to a Farther, yeah, much later right. date, I'm gonna suggest you might want the, February 18th, 18th meeting. That, that's a, that's the logical timeline to get I'm good with that. some opinion. Yeah. It just, I, I, I just technically that's those two things I think need to be done. Thank you, Councilor Gray. I was under the impression that when it was tabled, we didn't have to vote it, that it automatically went to be tabled. No, no, it's a vote it's on a the subsidiary table. subsidiary motion. You have to okay. vote on the motion to table, the subsidiary motion to table. I think. I, yeah, we vote on I the motion. Know. I think February 18th is the logical date. That, that will give them the second two months. The second in the meeting of February. Yeah, well, two months, basically. Councilor Deloria. On uh, the outside opinion, can uh, included this uh, this question here, but not limited to to it. Uh, also include uh, uh, the town accepting donate uh, third party donations that for for another organization because we've been warned on that issue as well. Uh, am I saying that that correctly? You know, if a community group uh, who doesn't have charitable status wants uh, donate wants to have the town collect them and the town make a uh, donation to that group of the amount, we've been warned against that. So if you can get a, an opinion on that as well. I just, I just want to comment on that. Um, the risk on that isn't losing your charitable status by virtue of being in government, you get it in my view. The risk on that is participating in a tax fraud and being charged with a crime. Um, so you can't do that. It, it's, it's wholly wrong. The, that was the thing I was talking about before. If it's a gift to a municipality or the province, it's a gift to them and it has to be an unconditional gift to the province. If, if, the, if the municipality later gives it a different gift or a different donation to something else, that's fine. But the two can't be contingent at all. If once they're contingent, it's entirely inappropriate. Okay. Well, the, the exact scenario was when the community group wanted to build the splash park, right? And we were accepting donations on for totally, the splash park. Totally, 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 in my view, totally illegal. It's a okay. it's a fraud. And and I don't know, but I'm guessing the tax evasion is probably not something we want to be able to do. <laughs> We've done that often. We did that with the Syrian family, the church groups we can money to the town. So, Mr. Kroll, do we have a, a 
the resolution then, or, or to vote on, on the, oh, you're doing that now. Sorry. No, the tabled resolution is just, the motion is made to be tabled. Okay. Right. Tabled. Okay. We're so we vote, vote on that yeah. though. Yeah. Okay. So the motion to table uh, the raffle license uh, decision paper, I guess we can say, will be uh, deferred till February the 18th. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> okay, moving down to 10.1. Result of the accounts is hereby, opposed be hereby approved for payment. General checks, account checks number 25379 to number 25451 for a total of $383,733.87. Payroll account checks number 4575 to 4582 for a total of 118,216 and 69 cents. Moved by Deputy Mayor Lentoni, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? Questions? No. Councillor Gray? No, no, no. I want to. I thought you okay. called the question. I'll call the question. Now, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.2. Whereas the capital budget for the year 2019 included $40,000 for sidewalks to be borne by federal gas tax reserve, and such sidewalks have been installed at the cost of $35,737.03. Therefore, be it resolved that $35,737.03 be transferred from the federal gas tax reserve fund to the general operating fund. Moved by Deputy Mayor Lentoni, second by Councillor Gray. All in favor? Both. It's carried. 10.3. Where, whereas the 2019 financial plan for the utility operating fund included $392,699 to transfer to the utility reserve, be hereby resolved that the lesser of $392,699 or the utility operating fund net operating surplus for the 2019 fiscal year be transferred from the Utility Operating Fund to the Water and Sewer Reserve Fund. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morial. All discussion, all in favor, opposed, it's carried. 10.4. Whereas the Town of Swanover incurred a general fund operating deficit of 220,824.74 for the year 2018. Resolved the lesser of $220,824.74 or the general operating fund net operating surplus for the 2019 fiscal year be transferred to the accumulated surplus to recover the general fund operating deficit incurred in the 2018 fiscal year. Move by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Gray. Discussion? All in favor? Oh, sorry, Councillor Delorier. So, will we have to change our application to the municipal board that's currently in? Right now, we're we're we currently have an application in to split it over 2020 and 2021. But if we use 2019 surplus, we, we probably probably won't have we like I'll change our application, correct? I th I think the uh, that Terry has already had it split in two because I think his guest only comes out at 110. Uh, that will be in surplus. So, or else it's we, a good coincidence that it comes up to half. So we can find that out, though. Yeah. Okay. You're good. Yeah. Happy man, and Tony. Why are we making this decision ahead of time? Why wouldn't we wait to see the official year-end numbers to come in first to make to decide where we're. <laughs> or applying, applying to it in the event that we don't have to change <coughs> applications for. I don't think there's any need to change any applications. Uh, as you know, Terry's not a confident <coughs> person when it comes to numbers, and he feels confident enough in these numbers that he's happy with that. So I would say he's pretty sure of what the number is going to be because he's not. He's not an overconfident person about numbers, as you know. Councillor Gray and then Councillor Morio. The, 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 the resolution um, avoids that discussion. It, it says if there's a surplus of more than $220,000, we'll, we'll, we will be effectively, for the first time in a number of years, without 
um, any ongoing debt for operating surpluses or operating deficits. Um, and if it's less than that, we'll pay the entire surplus to pay off that and then we'll divide it. I think it, it answers the question. We don't need to worry about it later. It'll be already done. It'll be part of the books. That's our plan for the surplus is what it says. That's that's how I read it. And that's why I'm strongly in favor. I mean, it's one of the big things I came running on that's pair down bills. Council Mario. Um, Further to Councilor when Tony used that question why why it's here. It's just I thought it would be when I first thought about it, but it's that since this is the last council for the fiscal year, um, it might be better to have it with as a resolution within this fiscal year versus trying to make it even though our books are not formally closed, it's a resolution brought forward in the current fiscal year. So. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Do you have another question? I just had one, one clarification. Okay, on the go ahead. Council agreed upon. There was only two deficits in the last 20 years. So it wasn't a number of years. No, 2015 no. and 2018. Right, but we carried it forward for three years. We had oh, a yeah. deficit period over the last number of years. We had a deficit period. Yes, we were repaying that's, that's all I was yeah. saying. Oh, okay. I wasn't okay. talking about no. a number of deficits. No. So what I was talking about okay. was the fact that in 2015, we'd spread it over three years. My yeah. first year here, they said, okay, I was told, well, we're paying a deficit. And then we had a deficit the first year. So that was going to be spread over another three years, and that was, you will recall my thought, that was, no, let's make it up. Let's just pay what we have to pay. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11.1, resolved that bylaw 14, 2019, special service residential waste and recycling collection be read at first time. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of the Town of Swan River Bylaw 15, 2019, being a bylaw of the Town of Swan River to amend its Bylaw 6 to 17, which provided for the expenditure of borrowing of funds to upgrade the mechanical piping and plumbing and fully replace electrical components plus installation of additional monitoring and Equipment at the 6th Avenue Waste Water Pump Station located 314 6th Avenue North be read at first time. Moved by Councilor Morio, second by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? Councilor Delorier. So is this project going to come in on what we had originally budgeted? Yeah, this bylaw, this is embarrassing, but this bylaw was actually passed. We just didn't send any of this to board. I thought so. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Uh, number 12, notice motion. Councillor or Deputy Mayor Wintoni has two items that he has listed for notice of motion. Mr. Charles. Okay. Uh, Am I the only one? Yeah. Oh, yes. Right? Very, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. I, Drew a blank. Yes. <laughs> Thank Resolve, you. <laughs> it's been a long day. Resolve that pursuit in sections 152 3 of the municipal council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. We have employee relations. Uh, anything else, guys? Else? No. Okay. Move by. Councilor <coughs> White, second by Councilor Delorier. All in favor? It's carried. Resolved that this regular meeting of council now be adjourned. Oh, oh sorry. no, no, no. All oh, right, we have that resolution to act. Sorry, thank you. Not that uh, fast. Resolved that the CAO and public works director carry out direction given in camera. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor White. All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> okay. Result of this regular meeting at council now be adjourned. Moved by Council Morial, signed by Council White. All in favor? 